Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how to create a WordPress single post template using Elementor. The Elementor theme builder lets you design your own single post template from scratch using all the elements and tools that they provide. The theme builder lets you create templates not only, not only just for single posts but for any custom post type that you make on your website. So first things first, what you want to do to make things easier would be to actually create the posts themselves on WordPress. So I have posts here and I've got three example posts and it would be good to kind of have a featured image, the name and actual content attached to them. It just makes it easier to edit the template when you have the real content in front of you. So once you've created your posts and it's populated with all the content, you can start building your template. So what you want to do is go into templates here and then go into theme builder. And then you want to click single post and you then you want to just click add new and this will open up a blank template and what you'll also have the option to do is use any of the elementor pro templates so if you scroll through the blocks and type in single post you'll be able to see there are some free templates that you can use and if you insert them you can customize the styling the colors any of the images and things like that um, just for this example though, we'll, we'll build everything from scratch, but you also have this option as well with the Pro Elementor plugin. So what you want to do is just X out of that here, and you'll just see a blank template here with your header and your footer. And what you want to do is use the section here and the builder on the left just to sort of build out the blocks that you want, where you want them, and add the new sections. A good blog layout doesn't have to be anything too complicated. You don't want to put too much on the page to kind of distract the user from reading the actual content that's on your site. At the same time, you also want to be able to break it up with any images and videos. So adding like the featured image at the top, the page title, and even a sidebar on the side can really help make this a post that's easy to navigate and easy to read and keep users on your page and also explore around your site. So first things first, what you want to do is make sure that the preview settings for your um, template is set to a blog that's already been filled out with all the content and um, by, by that I mean if you go into settings and go into preview settings you want to preview dynamic content as a single post and you want to just select a post that has all the content that way when you drag on post content or page title it's already filled out for you and it's not and it's not left blank so for this blog layout what we're going to do is a simple hero section with the title, some meta information including like the date or the author, the actual post content, and then some links to other blog posts as well as links, external links to share the post with like online with social media. So firstly I'm going to start off with the hero section, so I'm just going to click the plus sign and I'm going to select just the one column structure. And I'm just going to keep it boxed for now. And then I'm going to drag on the post title. So if I go into elements, you'll see the single option. So these are all of the elements that, that come with the single page template. So you have things like the post title, post content, featured image, things like that. And I'm just going to take the post title and just drag it on here. And you can see it's already filled with dynamically with the post title. And then you can come into style and change any of the styling settings that I need. Um, and I can change the typography and things like that. I might, I might even want to add the post excerpt just at the bottom, just to kind of give users an overview of what this post is going to be about. So if I go back into the elements here and then select post excerpt, I would just click on that and drag it just underneath. And you can see it shows up here. If I didn't want it to take up the whole space, what I'd do is put it in a inner column. So if I put an intersection here, and then move the t move the excerpt into one of the columns. You can see it kind of takes up half because it's within the column. And then I can also choose to kind of drag that a little bit to the left or the right. So then I can decide exactly how much space I want this excerpt to take up. Just a tip with one of the, with the inner columns is that they all come with padding underneath. So if I hide this editor here, you can see it's sort of not aligned to the title because of the inner column that has some padding. So what you want to do is go into the column, go into advanced, and then get rid of the padding here. And you might want to do the same with the left one. 
And now when I go check it, because the padding's been removed, I can see it aligned up to the left. Um, if you're not happy with the height of the section, um, by default, it the height of it will sort of flow with the height of all the elements that are within it. Or if you want, you can set a minimum height. Or you can also set it to fit the screen. So whatever the user screen, sky, screen size is, it'll be sized to fit that. Um, for this post, we'll just stick to the minimum height and we'll give it a height of 350. And you can also give it a background color so it's not left so white. So what you want to do is click on the sections to give the section a background color and then go into style and then background type and you also want to click color and you will just use the color block here or the color wheel or the transparency to kind of decide what color that you want the section and then once you're happy with that you just leave it there here and what you can also do is add any post meta so uh, or post information so if I drag on this widget here um, I get information like the author, the date, the time, comments, things like that. And you can go in and remove which ones that you want. So for example, um, if you don't want to show the author or the com number of comments or even the time, you can just have the date in there. And if you want, you can go in and add them back in by just going and in, clicking into the item. And then you want to just click into type and then click on the type that you want. If you have a dynamic field on each of the posts, you can select custom. And then with the dynamic tags, you can go in and select the, if it's a ACF field or if it's a jet field or anything like that, it will show up here. And then you can add a new sort of custom metadata onto the post. And for now, we'll just stick to date. And then within date, you can select a different format. So you have custom formats um, and you also just have the pre-made formats as well. Same with time. If you were to do the time, you can also set time format and you can set it to be a custom format or you can choose a format that's already been laid out here. Um, within the comments, you can also do a custom format in terms of the message to write once if there's only if there's no comments or if there's only one comment um, and things like that. And then terms, you can also do a list of the of the taxonomies that are attached to it. So for example, if you want a list of the categories that are assigned to the post, you would just select the categories and it'll show up as a list, all the categories that's um, attached to the post. And then you can choose if you want it linked as well. So if I were to click on marketing, it'll take me to the marketing category page and show me all of the posts that are attached to marketing. I can do the same with tags. So it'll show me all the tags that are attached and same if I want to link them or not, it'll take me to the uh, an archive page of all of the posts showing all of the posts attached to the tech that have tech assigned to them as a tag. With all of them, you can select an icon. So the default icon is already set, but if you want to um, put in your own, you just click custom and then you can either upload an SVG or you can go into the uh, icon library. And then you can go into style and then change the styling. So if you want to have spaces between them, if you had more than one in the list, you can change the alignment and you can choose to add a divider. With the icon, you can choose different colors and also the size. So if we were to increase that size a little bit. Same with the text. If you want to change the text color, if you wanted to um, change the typography, you can. Once you're happy with the hero, then we can move on to the next section. And for this will be the actual post content. And what we'll do is we'll do post content with a sort of simple sidebar that we'll make with Elementor. So it'll be a two column layout. So for that, I will add a two column layout here and they won't be equal columns because the sidebar won't need as much width as the post content. So I'll just use this one here. So the left column has a bit more width than the right one. And you can see that's already uh, made here. And then if I go back into elements, I'm going to select the post content and just drag it in here. And you can see this is the actual post content. So this is the content that I have um, on the post that I'm previewing and it's just showing up here and within that you can then change like the text color um, you can change the alignment and things like that if you wanted to add images within the text what you would need to do is do that within the post content so if I were to add an image here um, that would then show up on the post so that's if you wanted to change 
the actual content within. Same with any links. If you want to link any of them, you would do that on the actual post and not within Elementor. So that's kind of important. Um, and now if I just close that for a sec and just have a look at what I'm of what the page looks like, you can see I'm missing some spacing in here. So I will go into section and then I will add some top padding on the top here. Another thing you can add is a featured image. So you can choose to add the featured image at the top maybe. Or you can remove it altogether if you don't want to keep it on the page, it's up to you. One thing to note is to make sure that all of your pages have uh, an H1 tag. H1 tags are an important part of SEO. Um, and it's important that your, each page on your site has only one. Good H1 tags um, would have would match them to your title tags and it can make a big difference to your SEO performance. So for example, if you wanted the page title to be your H1 tag, what you want to do is click onto the page, type, page title, post title here, go into content, and then where it says HTML tag, make sure that it's set to one. Um, and this is set automatically if you were to use the post title, but if you were to do it manually and just use the heading, you can see the default is actually H2, and what you want to do is change that to H1. Now that we have the post content done, what we'll do is build out the sidebar. So within the sidebar, we'll have links to other uh, posts on your website, and we'll also have social media links as well, so people can share their po the post on social media. Um, a good way to do this would be to break them up with headings. So I will add a heading up here, um, and I'll change it to H6. I think it's not that important. And I will call this heading share this post. And we'll change any um, styling issues here. And then just underneath that, I will add the share buttons. So if I type in share, you can see share buttons come up here. And a list of Facebook share button or Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. These are all share buttons that we can use for the website and for the post specifically. And under this section here, the item section, you can choose exactly where you want people to post to. So you have options for Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Um, and you can also do things like Pinterest, Reddit, WhatsApp, email, things like that. So for example, if we were to click WhatsApp and add that one, and then also add maybe email, um, you can see the listing out here. And you can give each of these a custom email. So if you want to change, just change that to mail, you can. If you leave it blank, it'll just use the default ones. And then under view, you can choose if you want icon and text, which is what's setting out now. Or if you want, you can just click icon, or if you want just text as well. In this example, we'll just use icon as it doesn't take up a lot of space. And just underneath then, we'll add a recent news section to show all the uh, links to other news articles. And I'll just copy the heading that we already have and just paste it below, seeing as I want the same styling, and just change the content. So we'll change that to recent news. And what I want to do is go into the post element here. And this will list out all of the posts that we currently have. And what we'll do, we'll change the column to one. And it's up to you how many posts you want to show per page. Um, a good idea might be three, depending on how long the content is going to be. Um, but for now, we'll just do three, and then we'll get rid of the image, the image, so that we have some space as well. You can give it an excerpt length. So, for example, if I want to just change this to ten, and this will change the excerpt length so that it only shows ten per page. You can give it some metadata, so things like time, comments. I want to save some space, so I'm just going to give it, I'm not going to give it any um, metadata. And it's up to you if you want to have um, the option to open it in a new window. Um, if seeing as it's opening within your website, you might want to just leave that as is. Or if you do want to open a new window, you would just click on yes, and then it would open in a new window for users. 
one thing you want to make sure is that the post isn't that the recent news section isn't showing the post that it's currently on. So if I'm on post two, it shouldn't show post two in the recent news section. So the way to do that is if you go into query and then make sure source is selected as post and you want to click exclude. And when it's where it says exclude by, you want to click current post. So that way it won't show the current post that's currently showing. And then like all the other widgets um, in Elementor, what you can do is go into style and change the styling to however you want. So for example, I'm going to change the um, text colors to black. as well. We'll leave the read more as is and what I want to do is add some color on the left on the on the right so I'm going to make change the box color to match this section box color so if I go into box and type in background color I'm just going to paste on the code from the top one and as you can see there's it's really close to the edge so I'll just add some padding maybe 10 on each side and then I'll change the read more color since it's not showing as clearly as before. Change that to black. And now when I look up, when I, if I close the editor here and just take a look and I can see if there's any issues or if there's anything I want to change. So far it looks good on desktop but what we want to do is make sure it looks good on tablet and mobile. So if I go into responsive mode here and then click on tablet I can see so the recent news gets a bit squished because it's gone into two columns. So what I'm going to do is go into the columns again and where it says layout you can see now it's in tablet mode and you can see the tablet icon meaning you can change it for tablet. And same with the content, columns, number of columns is two but I can change it to one for tablet. And now you can see it's showing up a lot neater. Same with the posts if I see that it's um, maybe too big. What I can do is go into style and where it says button size I can increase or decrease that. Um, you want to make sure just for accessibility purposes because it is in a smaller screen that people are able to click the buttons so you don't want to make it too small. Um, and the text looks fine, the spacing seems to be okay um, but if I wanted to maybe add a bit more padding on this column here what I would do is just get rid of the column and then add maybe a bit more column on the padding on the left so that it's not so close to the edge. Um, and I'll do the same for this column here just to make sure it all matches. I can see it's all aligned and it's fine. Um, and then I want to just check it on mobile as well. So you have the header here and it also sort of stacks so you have the header and then the post content and then you just have the um, sidebar showing up here. Once you're happy with everything it's then time to publish your post so that just means to make sure the template is active and on your, all of your posts. You just click publish here and then add condition and just like with headers and footers you can add the post depending on what post type it is if you wanted to just add it onto your um, post post type or if you want to add it to a custom post type you just click all singular drop down and then where it says post you just want to click posts or wherever your custom post type is listed you would just click click on the custom post type and you can either choose all or you can choose specifically a specific quote or you can do a post that is in a specific category or in a specific tag um, you can really define what kind of what post what template you want for each post and have different types of pet templates um, for each kind of post type and category types um, but for now we'll just do all posts and then just click save close and you can see it's now live so if I were to view um, our post now you can see post 2 is now um, here with all of the updated content and all of the share options and things like that.